What's up everybody, this is Dave here with today's episode on how to delete danger from your drops. This is for you if you're an intermediate mountain biker and you're specifically probably decent at two foot drops or drops without a whole lot of rocks and roots on them and you wanna get better at bigger drops, especially if you wanna go out there and eliminate fear on things that are going to be found in an enduro race or a downhill race or at your local bike park where the drop is bigger than two feet. So let's dive in. I'm making this video because one, there's a lot of bad advice out there, like get back on the bike and just send it and hold on. And there's a whole lot of coaching that's really good, but it doesn't give you the nuances you need as an intermediate mountain biker going from that specific range to being comfortable and dropping the fear on drops. Everyone will say you need to practice more, I think that you can actually be a great rider. You can be a great rider in just a little bit of time without a ton of practice if you know the right techniques. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how. So pay attention to the end because it's going to start with, number one, the cause of crashes. And we're gonna talk about, again, why you're able to do small drops, but you're not able to do those big drops. Then we're gonna talk about the physics of free ride with drops. And we're gonna talk about why you're having so much trouble getting on those bigger ones. Then we're gonna talk, talk about how to choose technique specific to the terrain that you wanna ride on your next ride. Maybe you got a bike park coming up that you wanna hit. Maybe you got a bike park in your town and you're tired of watching the little kids just go out there and go, ha ha, that was easy. And you're like, I've been riding 20 years and I still can't do this. So we're gonna fix that today. And I want you to try some of this stuff if you're a, a decent rider and you know some of these techniques. One little word of warning, some of these techniques I'm going to talk about if you don't know what they are or don't know how to use them, get a lesson. Like this is not, I'm not coaching you. Okay. So anyone who says that they're coaching you online, like if I, if I can't see your writing, I'm not coaching you. So just be careful, be careful out there. Let's dive in. Number one, the number one cause of crashes and plus why you can't do bigger or gnarlier drops. You should be here and you are here. All right. Now, obviously I'm going to expand on this in a second. When we do drops, here's what happens. We see the drop. Number two, you have a fear response. I'm not saying you're a scaredy cat, and this is not about mindset. This is about habit, okay? When you see danger, do you move towards it or do you move away from it? If you have a visceral fear response, no sane human, even if you're a firefighter, no sane human goes, danger, let's run towards it. That's insanity, okay? So if you're a normal human being who has courage, who has a normal fight or flight response, your biology is programmed to move away from fear. That's this one right here, okay? So be, be aware of our biology. We need to pay attention to biology if we're going to be smart mountain bikers. Now, here's the thing. We're on a mission to help 10,000 mountain bikers shred with confidence, and moving away from fear in our biology is incompatible with the move we need to be doing in order to be safe on the mountain bike. Okay, so hear me out. This is why this is so important. And so many channels talk about, here's what you need to do. But again, we need to talk about your biology and we need to be able to talk about how to get the right move installed naturally. And we need to do it feeling confident. So it's gotta be natural. And we've gotta feel confident, okay? Both of these have to happen. So in order for this to work, what we gotta do is we have to change our entire response to things, and we also have to change how we think about it. Now, the reason why this is so incredibly important, most riders, they do a version of this right here that you're seeing where the arms are fully, fully, fully extended, and you can't extend the arm anymore. Okay, we're maxed out here. And a lot of times we, we move our butt back and the torso up and away. Okay, so this is, again, this is the fear zone. The fear response is back here. We gotta get away from the danger. The danger's down here, okay? Danger, ew, yuck, right? So again, this is normal. So check out this first attempt that I did on this drop. Watch this right here. I'm low, I'm an, I'm an animal on attack. Oh no, what did I do right there? I moved away from the danger. Let's move this where you can see it. This is how you know that I've never hit this drop before. Perfectly packed, really clean, and boom, okay? So what happened here? Moved away from the danger, front of the bike dropped. Okay, I had to go into emergency mode and brace. Obviously, I didn't have enough speed. So I didn't even do this too terribly, and I still almost crashed, okay? So the point is that if you want to be safe on the bike, you have to not move towards the danger. We have to make the danger irrelevant. How do we do that? Okay, we need to move over and look at the physics of mountain biking. When you get away from the danger, 
Watch my front tire. The exact wrong thing happens. I have nowhere backwards to move anymore. Gravity is pulling me and the bike down. And because my back tire is still on the drop, guess what happens? I'm going to pitch forward. Now I managed to, you know, keep this from being too crazy, but watch what happens here. Oh my gosh. I've got a 45 degree angle on my wheels and I'm basically going over the bars if I'm not, you know, braced really strong and good at landing bad drops. This is what happens. You will get pitched forward. So the last thing you ever want to do is extend your arms, get back on the bike and stick your butt over the tire. I'm not going to play any exact examples, but you can, if you watch a video of yourself crashing on a drop going over the bars, it's because your butt is right here. You've gotten as far back as you possibly can and you've gotten really low. So this is just like slinking in the, you know, slinking away in the cockpit, you know, trying to hide from danger. It just doesn't work. And so what it does again, is it rotates you forward and you will smash down front tire forward. It's very dangerous. So what we need to do instead is have a look at the different techniques and how they can help us in being safe on the bike. And this will eliminate that fear that we talk about. And what you want to do, it's really, really, really simple. I'm going to show you a couple examples of some drops here that I did and show you some of the nuances and how you can combine them. You can punch the bike out like this from a low position and then do kind of a manual and hold it like this if you're a skilled rider, all right? This one works fine if you have a wooden bridge and a smooth lander like this one where there's not a lot of chaos going on. So kind of a low position, punch the bike out and manual off totally fine. You can also do this if the launch has some rocks and roots on it. All right, now let's talk about a couple different techniques we can use in dropping and how to think about using these in each different situation. So you can punch or lunge. That's where you start in a low position and you move the bike forward relative to you as you're going off the drop and then you move it backward midair. You can also load the suspension or stomp or trampoline bounce. Those are just some of the ways that riders talk about this. This is where you start in a tall position and you drop your torso ever so slightly and then transfer that energy into the feet. What you're doing is loading the suspension. So starting tall and then loading the suspension looks just like this. And this one's really, really good if you have uh, like this, this is one of my riders um, in the Mountain Bike Academy, Mike. What he's doing is he's standing tall. And if you notice right here, watch his front suspension. Again, these are the nuances that you just won't ever see unless you have someone breaking this down for you slow motion. Ever so slightly, do you notice how his suspension is compressed right here? And then it comes back up to him right there. But his front wheel drops, not his body. Why is that? Well, it's because he stayed tall and he loaded his bike before the drop. And then that energy was transferred up to him. And now the bike is pulled up to him. So for so many riders, the reason why the bike feels like it's falling away from you is because you're literally moving away from the bike. And then gravity kicks in when the bike is no longer on a surface and it's midair. Of course, it's falling away from you because you just moved away from the bike. And now the bike is falling down because of gravity. And you are too. The net effect of that is the two objects move away from each other. It's a horrible feeling to be in the, I, I used to do it this way all the time. It's a horrible feeling when you're in the air and the bike's pulling away from you and all you're trying to do is hold onto the bike and then you're, you're off to the side or you're going over the bars. What's really cool here is Mike is actually leaning towards the danger. I also wanted to point that out. So what's really cool about this is it allows you to go and spot your landing. He's probably smiling behind that full face. Look at that, he's leaning over the bike. He's got that style. This is like three years ago. He's even gotten better since then. And it allows you to land nice and smooth and race off into the sunset, which is really cool. So the real benefit of, here, I'm gonna separate these two. So there's some pluses and minuses to, you know, this is actually a, a West Coast. So a lot of a lot of folks on the West Coast, PMBI teaches this out in Whistler. And the West Coast, they kind of prefer, hey, let's go and put the bike where it needs to go. A lot of YouTubers talk about this too. Uh, nothing wrong with the technique. It's just that it requires a little bit better timing. 
In other words, you get punished if your timing is off because if your back tire is hanging on the ledge that you're dropping off of, then you can go over the bars a little bit. And it also um, requires more movement. Now the, the plus to this one is that it's actually a little bit easier to manage rocks and roots with. You literally cannot do this technique where you load the suspension and you have massive amounts of rocks and roots on the edge of the drop. So for example, if you have a drop that looks like this one right here on the left of the screen, um, the stomp drop will not work for you or the, the suspension load drop will not work. Good. Okay, so what we're doing here, if we're on this drop, we have three successive drops. One right here, we're gonna need to feed the bike down, feed the bike down, and now watch this, we're midair. Look at how low the rider is. The key with this one is that you're tall. So when you're compressing the suspension in this technique, you're tall. And you know, you're gonna pay the price of being tall if you're in this position here on the left, okay? So if this rider tried to do a, a suspension compression to make this drop happen, it'd be almost impossible. So it's, it's really cool to be able to have the punch or the lunge for more technical, like enduro, free ride, um, racing type of drops where we wanna be low and we wanna use our body as suspension in order to do it. So the result of that ends up being, again, we can feed the bike down where we need it to go and land really, really centered, okay? So that's what's awesome about the difference here. Now, let's take a look further at Another issue too is, is a manual. So a lot of, a lot of um, YouTubers and advanced riders, this is advanced only, flat out. Some YouTubers will be like, you gotta do a manual. What I really think that they're saying is that you should um, punch the bike out or lunge it out, kind of like the, the West Coasters teach primarily. And, uh, and they're not wrong, it's just that they're calling it a manual. You should not touch manuals and drops together unless you are extremely advanced and you know exactly what you're doing. Period. Oh, yeah. um, now, the distinction here is that if you do a lunge and you're go or a punch and you're going slow, it allows you to move your body forward or back as you're going off the drop. Now, let's say that I maybe time my lunge perfectly. Okay, so I'm chin over stem. I initiate my my punch or my lunge from a low position. Boom! Watch this. All I've got to do is go back to center and I land. Both tires about at the same time. Not even perfect, pretty good. Now the problem is, what if I initiate my lunge a little early or my punch a little early or a little late? So what's going to happen is that I need to stay on the bridge with my body weight. In other words, if I do it too early, if I punch out too early, then the front's gonna start dropping and I need to move my body weight backwards and hold it there in order to not have the front pitch forward on me, okay? But the way that I would think about it is this. So what we wanna do is we wanna break it down into two primary approaches and then using other techniques for adjustments. So the punch or the lunge drop, I prefer this over gnar, or if the terrain is changing a lot, or if we're going extremely fast and we're super tall up. So in other words, if you got a five, 10, 15 foot drop, I wanna be as low as possible and I wanna be able to punch out and bring it back. If I have a very predictable or smooth drop, then I might wanna lean a little bit more on loading the suspension because you're literally just popping your feet down like you're standing on a trampoline and letting the bike come back up to you. There's nothing else to it. This one's incredibly simple. Now, the issue is that if you run into any adjustments that you need to make, here's what I would do. Let's say that you're you're going and you're just loading straight down and you're letting the bike come back up to you with that compression or that stomp drop and you realize the front is pitching down. If the front wheel goes down, then just add a punch. Or what other YouTubers say is, is a manual. Don't do that. <laughs> add a little bit of punch. Add a little bit of punch. That's it. That'll keep the front from dropping. The second thing is if you're doing this drop and you realize that the landing is very steep and you're going to be too flat, then simply 
move your torso forward. That's it. Can you see how simple this is? Now, if we want to um, do the compression drop here, again, this is the drop. If we're compressing into the bike straight down from a tall position, and we realize that, and we realize that there's actually a knuckle at the end here, or there's a rock we didn't quite see, or we kind of feel the back tire kind of getting bumped a little bit, you're going to go over the bars if you don't make this adjustment. Just add a bit of punch. That's it. Punch it out a little bit. That way, you don't quite go over the bars. Um, <clears throat> All right, so let's talk about if we are going off of a drop and we're going to punch out and return back to center. What we need to do, really, really simple. If you feel the bike pitching down for whatever reason, then what you can do is drop your hips or extend more. Okay, obviously your timing needs to be good to begin with, but that's all you gotta do. If you're going off of a drop and you punch or you lunge out and you find yourself getting a little knuckle on the end or some rocks and roots and some gnar, I don't know what the symbol for absorb is, but let's, it's like a ripple in time or a nipple in time. <laughs> I, I just made that up, it's terrible. So yeah, absorb. Now, the cool part about this is if you're already low, our legs and our ankles are kind of already, you know, they're going to be good at being absor at absorbing forces because you're all bent up. I mean, think about it. If someone comes, if your kid jumps on your back while you're in a squat, you're going to dip down a couple inches. If your legs are locked in a straight position and you're standing tall and your kid jumps on your back, your little guy or your little gal, they might hurt themselves. <laughs> so when our legs are already bent, they tend to absorb more. So just absorb if you find yourself running into a knuckle on the end of the drop. If you are going off of a drop and you find out that the landing is steep, super, super steep, and you're punching out or lunging out, and you're coming back, then what you need to do is look over the bars, okay? It's very simple. All you do is do what Mike did on the video a second ago, and just move your torso forward, point your toes down, pull the bike up under you, and you'll nose down just nicely. Now, the other thing too is that if you get in a situation where you're realizing that you're, you're lunging out on a drop, this one's really important for maybe racing. If you're going too slow, what's going to happen is the front is going to drop. One thing you can do is lunge out. All right, so let's cover exactly what this looks like. Again, if you're going off of a drop, this is a predictable drop and I'm compressing the shock a little bit. Oh, the front went down. Great, I'm gonna move my body back ever so slightly. You might not even be able to see it. What I'm doing is I'm moving my body back and down. What that does is it keeps me from going over the bars too much. That is pretty nose heavy though. If I wanna add a manual to things, I can do that as well. So let's say I'm standing up tall, I compress the shock, and then I realize, oh no, the front's kind of going down. Great, I can actually manual and you notice I'm not chin over stem anymore. My chin is behind the stem and I've punched out a little bit. So that's an example of adding a little bit of punch to it. Just some things to try in your next ride. Just remember, you can move on the bike, it's okay. Now listen, which part of this video did you resonate with? What, what are some things that you maybe haven't heard before? What are some things you'd like to see? I'd like to hear from you, put them in the comments below. Like and subscribe this video, share it with another rider because we're on a mission to help 10,000 riders shred with confidence. That's all for today. We'll see you on the next one.